So this talk will be about improving your DevOps feedback loop. And we'll also be reusing patterns you know, reusing the skills your developers already have, and not inventing something else, but the things you already use and know, finding familiarities and things. It will be about having a consistent experience, regardless of environment or where uh, you are, and hopefully, at least I think, a joyful experience. So, my name is Matthias Carlson. I'm a partner and senior architect at a company called Vcom in Gothenburg on the west coast of Sweden. I'm also a Microsoft Azure MVP and a Microsoft Developer Technologies MVP. Uh, I'm an OSCode magician. I like to debug code and make it work. Uh, and for us, why I'm here, I'm also really active in open source. So I have like 26 projects I maintain, uh, most known for the project, I'm gonna, the project I will talk about now, Cake, but also I have a, a JSON serializer I started in 2007, something like that, with, uh, and on the model theme. So I've been doing open source for a long time. Uh, also a member of the .NET Foundation and things like that. And last but not least, the most important part, uh, hopefully still husband of one and father of two. So this is going to be about Azure DevOps and how you can have a pipeline. And the classic pipeline that knew was a graphical one, and there was a low barrier of entry. So it was really easy to get started. And it was kind of intuitive because you can point and click and you can select things and you had the tasks ready. Uh, the problems came with it was hard to maintain because it was really easy to generate stuff, but like you had unicorn pipelines because you could copy paste and it was almost like when you do something with a graphical tool, it's hard to reuse. You can export import, but it was not the main part. So that's to solve that industry, sort of like YAML was the thing or JSON or things like that. And there was like easier to maintain because you had a text file that you versioned with your code. And that's like you for some like me that like codes and console that's and it was easy to reuse because you, it was easier to copy paste but you could also have templates you can have code blocks that you can reuse in your uh, in your yaml files the discoverability not so good it was a new dsl and one problem often with dsls is that with yaml well github has their yaml uh, we could have actions Azure DevOps has to YAML, FBayer has their YAML, and Travis CI has their YAML. So it wasn't as discoverable, and the tooling was so so. And was a, that means a high barrier of entry. So you had a classic pipeline, which was easy to get started, easy to generate stuff, but if something went wrong, or it was hard to maintain and that part. And how was like how's the experience if you use both? Like this is very similar experience from from a perspective, like you edit either the graphical pipeline or you edit the file and you save that definition and you either then run it or commit push it and you wait, you grab some coffee and wait some more. And then if something broke, you do everything again. And that's like the loop you do. And it's tedious and time consuming sometimes. Uh, I see a lot of uh, commit when the DevOps pipeline is wrong, when you see like 10 commits with finally, now I solved it, and they start just three dots at the end. <laughs> and then you just git rebase and you get it right the first time. Uh, and how's that with cake then? Like the experience there is, I think it's more discoverable, I will hopefully show you. It's reusable, uh, your code and your skills. And that makes it more maintainable in my eyes. Uh, and the workflow is, isn't is that different. The main difference is like you edit your C, like C-sharp files. You save them. The big difference is you can run them on your machine. And that's because you don't need to send it off to get the first impression of will it even compile. Uh, there's so many, like, I edit YAML and the space is wrong. And that you get, like, and you have to wait for the agent to queue up. You have to wait there, and then you get, OK, so you start over. But here, at least, you can get that syntax check directly. And also, it's not a markup language. It's a compiled c -sharp language. You get every like a type system. You get variables and things like that. And then you commit push. 
and you wait and you grab coffee sometimes. Like, but so it's very similar, but you also have the local experience and the same experience, I'm sure. Like. So what is Cake? It's a cross-platform. And what I mean by that, it will run on Mac, it will run on Linux, it will run even on Windows. Uh, and that's like the big one of the like traits of Cake. And it's also cross-environment. And what I mean by that is well, it will both run locally, it will run on-prem, and like it's almost like hybrid or container, like it will it's meant to be run everywhere and come be able to run everywhere. And it's cross-service, I mean it will run on Azure DevOps, GitHub, like, GitHub Actions, AppBay, or anything like that's the idea. We should be able to run on any service, any CI system or CI CD or pipelines or whatever they call them nowadays. And it's also cross runtime. And that means it will run on Mono, it will run on .NET Framework, and on .NET Core. So you can be able to have a very similar script that you can reuse across all platforms. If you use something that's only in one runtime, of course, then it would only run at that runtime. But like, all our code most is .NET standard, so we'll run on any. Uh, but you can always, like, if I need something in that platform, like if you need C Sharp 8, well, then you need to be on .NET Core. It's open source. So like if you have an issue, you can raise an issue. Hopefully, you can raise the PR. Or just yell us on our Twitter, because this is like the common place to yell on people. Or uh, we have a Gitter chat, which is really friendly. So that's one big advantage of Cake because we have a really good community. And finally, like what it really is, well, it's a build orchestration tool. So it doesn't replace MS build or .NET CLI or anything or end unit or X unit. It orchestrates this tool. Like, just like YAML orchestrates something. It doesn't really like it doesn't replace like make can replace everything in the pipeline. No, it orchestrates the tools you already use. So you should still like my philosophy is you should still be able to clone a repository and build the Visual Studio. Cake should only be a layer to orchestrate that process so you have a good recipe for how your DevOps pipeline is. Consider it. And it's a C-sharp DSL. So you can, it's not a console application. Well, it can be. But the common way is to use a C-sharp scripting language, which means you have less craft. You have one file, no progress system. So I will show that. So a common, like, what does a common pipeline look like? Usually you restore your artifacts. You find your NuGet packages or NPM packages, whatever. And you build your code. You test it, hopefully. And if it tests, you will package that up in a NuGet package or NPM package, or if you have like a v6 installer or whatever. And then you publish that artifact somewhere. And that's like the common pipeline. And that's what I will use as an example today. And for this example, I will use a simple sample solution uh, where we will have a solution. We will have a, a console, a .NET library. We will have a simple test project. And I will have a global tool with the, essentially it's a console application. So we have just three, so I can call that. Build, yes. So, how do you like obtain cake and get started with cake? So we have different skews of cake because we have a history we existed before .NET Core even. So we have on NuGet we have cake, which is the .NET framework or mono version. You can download the exe there from. We have cake tool, which is the global tool, which is what I prefer on like if you don't on .NET Core 3 or up above. And that is the I will use for all the demos today. Is the, and if you see your guidelines, you will see the cake exe is mostly used in all our documentation. But going forward, it will probably be the tool which is, has all the nice things in it. Uh, cake Core is for .NET Core 2, which was one of the first that we were early on with. So if you need to run a .NET Core 2. Uh, and frosting is if you want to like the console application experience. So that's actually a cons like you actually have a C-sharp project, and you can have uh, that. We're also available on Shockety, and that's the Cake EXE. The, but, but it will install everything on your Windows machine if you just want it available globally. We'll also available on Homebrew if you have a Mac. And we also have a container if you want something ready to start from. 
but many just start from the cake tool and use the like the Microsoft provided containers. Like I use the .NET uh, Core, like use a builder container and a runtime container, and you can use the standards there. So let's see how we can obtain cake. So we, if we go to the command line. So my preferred way, and that's my personal preferred way, is to use the global tool. And with .NET Core 3, they also came with local tools. And that means that you can have a manifest. So you can just use the .NET new command and do a tool manifest. This will create a JSON file locally in a repository. And this means that you can have different versions of the tool in different repositories. And this is good if you want consistency and reproducible builds. You can have the different version of tools in for each repository. And global tools are installed with the tool command. And we have the cake tool. And when you have like manifest this, it will install it and make it available in this folder and below. So from the folder, you install the manifest, and below, this command will be available. So I can just do .NET cake. And that should give some fancy ASCII art, because we all love that. So now we have obtained cakes. So now we have it installed. You can also do the .NET tool install and do a dash G. Then it will, just like the chocolatey package uh, or the homebrew package, it will be globally available in systems. You can just do it in any folder. So the first time you like, have a file new pro like have a new repository, you can do the .NET new tool manifest. That will create that manifest file in. So it will create uh, an e-repository. Then you can, oh, it's scale, uh, .NET tool install cake tool. And that will, if you have the manifest, it will install it. Otherwise, you will have to either specify the dash G for installing a tool global or dash L for specifying a path to install it. But it's really nice when you have manifest because then you will pin the version. If someone clones out a repository and you have that nice manifest, they can just do a .NET tool restore. And they will restore your the version you specified, so you will know that they're running the exact same version that you wrote your build script in. And then you can have .NET Cake. So it's really uh, a good way, I think. It's good practice. Just say you can have lock files for a new get now and things like that. It's good to have your dependencies. If, because if you want reproducible builds, you need to pin your version. So I think that's pretty important. So <coughs> now time to write a Cake script. So, uh, for the best experience, I'm currently with CakeScript, I recommend VS Code. And for several reasons, we have a VS Code uh, add-in, so you can install a Cake add-in there. We also have IntelliSense support uh, is in VS Code. We don't have it in Visual Studio at the moment. Uh, anyone that's written a VS Visual Studio add-in knows it's painful uh, to add something. But VS Code has a really nice, you can, with TypeScript and a couple of things, and uh, they have a language provider and things like that. So my recommendation is VS Code, but you can use any text editor. I, I often just use Sublime or whatever, just to do something quick. Uh, and the convention by default is to have a file called build.cake. That's the default, but it can be named anything. So let's create uh, build.cake. And versus like a C-sharp project or any other, like you will get like five files or something. To get started with Cake, this is all you need. And some like it, some don't, but this is like, I really like it because it's, you have everything you need to describe your build process can be in one place. So you can essentially just start typing uh, C-sharp here. And Cake has, uh, a lot of global, we call them aliases, but you have, we have already imported most imported the most common namespaces, so you don't have to add using statements for the most common used ones. 
Uh, and also we have something called aliases which are globally available methods. Just like in C Sharp, if you're using static, you will have those methods ready for you to so just type. So you can, and, and one like common use language is argument, if I want to read something from the command line. So I'm just gonna do one called target here. I can explain in detail later. And we'll, and one nice thing about the argument is that you can have, this is, if you have enter one, it will convert to a C sharp type. So if I have a one here, we will know it is uh, an integer. So it has that, but I want, uh, and you enter the default value at the end. Then we want to have the different tasks. We have that, if you remember, we had restore, we had the build, we had those stuff. And in Cake, we have something called the dependency graph and we will create tasks. So remember, we have, we'll have a restore task. And that we will and we had a build task. Hopefully we had some tests. And a package in type. Publish. And by default, you can just write C sharp here and we'll execute it. To execute the task graph, we have a command called run target. Uh, and I will take the command line. I just entered that. So that's. So if we just switch to command line. So build.cake is the default, but if I had some other file, I can just enter the file name here so you can have any scripting, but the fact. Uh, so if we, doesn't do anything yet, but if we do the restore, oh, let's, this is fine. Oh, no, that, it's me typing on. Equals. So that executed the real store task. Uh, but if you see in Azure DevOps pipelines, you just specify them in like an array and they will do it in that order. Uh, with the dependency graph, it's, it's a little bit more refined. Uh, let's see here. So the build task is dependent, like we want to run restore before we build. Uh, so then we have something called uh, the task method will give a task builder back, and that has some couple of extension methods. And we want to define that this, that build is dependent on restore. And the test is Well, we want to build before we test. And before we package, we want to test, even if the manager wants us out quicker, we still want to test our code. And before we, before we can uh, publish something, we need to package it. And you can also have task that only has dependencies. So what I usually do is that I have a default task, which has dependencies on all the tasks I want to run by default. So if I don't specify arguments, so that's why I will do And by default, we want to run the publish one. I see in this case. So if I don't specify a target now, oh, 
typos are excellent. That's you know why it's live. There's no smoke and mirrors here. And now Cake will do it in that order, like based on the dependency graph. So based on you can have multiple tasks that depend on one thing, and then it will do it in the right order. Which means you can have, if you only want to run a single log, you can do that too. So I can do, if I do now, if I run the build task, yeah. Type right, so it will run the restore task for now. We, that's guaranteed. Dependent on the so that's like we have our skeleton. We have what we want to solve. So the restore um, in the classic time, you had just took something out. I didn't get restore task or like the dot core task, and you choose the restore command. If you see in the YAML, you did something similar, but you had a task, uh, you did a .NET CLI, and you specified a command on which folder you're going to restore and things like that. So how would that look in Cake? Well, if we go to this, uh, it, we have something called DOS, because it's going to do something. Kind of makes sense. And you pass it to Lambda. This can also, good to know, it can be, if you want, like, async things, you can also do the async and uh, before Lambda, you can have sync methods. You can all, there's several overloads here, but we could do the simple one here. And we have several like things included. And well, we have something called .NET Core Restore. And let's do the source folder. If you try that, now it hopefully actually does something. So now it shelled out to .NET CLI and it restore the project we have here. So it's like. If you go to the, for the basics, it's not that different from, like, to migrate from. You know, but it's, what you have is C sharp, with all the variables and things like that. So if you can see the build task. In the classic UI, you add the same .NET task and you specify the build instead, and similar in the YAML. And how hard can that be? It can be nearly impossible, probably. Well, you do the DOS. Could it be called .NET Core? Yeah, correct. It's kind of nice when it's consistent and you can get something. And this is cool, but if I move around the way, make it a little bigger. So the cool part is all the arguments that the .NET CLI has, we have typed that in C sharp objects. So you can do I can go build settings. And there's no more like, oh, there's a nice schema that is out of place. I had out day with a YAML where it was typed as any. And that's good type. It can be anything. It was a string. But yeah, here it's actually and you can do things like, well, I already restored. So I don't want to restore again in this step. And that's a Boolean. It's not, you don't need to know how to underline command or anything. You can get it to it, but it's C sharp where you have intelligence Boolean. So let's see if this works.
And well, we can do this for, if anyone can guess what the test command is. There's no price in it. <laughs> it's called test. We follow the same, and we have done test settings. And because we already built, we can pass the no build. We don't need to know, but we can always check. So now we have the test. Uh, it's ready. And then we want to pack it. And then we have pack settings. You. And the nice thing when we come to publish, in this case, I know we're going to be on Azure pipelines. So we're going to do And this is Legacy Reason. They will be renamed Ash DevOps. Uh, they have a couple of cake has been around for six years now. So we it's been named TFS, Visual Studio Online, it's been called many names. Uh, and VSDS. Yeah. Uh, so currently called Table, we will align it with the one of the probably with call Ash DevOps. Uh, but it's been currently Tibble. This will give you access to commands to interact with your CI system typed and nice. So let's do, uh, if I want to upload an artifact directory, for example. It will actually not work locally, but you can try it locally. <laughs> so you can see that it compiles because so many errors are syntax related and things like that, you can check that your variables are correct because you do something like that. So um, something I did, like, didn't, uh, like things like output directory for the pack setting. Let's see here, if I have a comma instead of dot. So, so here I can specify I want the NuGet packages to end up in an artifacts folder called NuGet. And I mean, I could get a type error, so I want a variable that I can reuse for that output directory. Uh, so let's call that, call it something like that. And this is on like the task is almost like local methods in C sharp. So you can actually access variables defined out, outside. So if I do the then I can specify there and when I upload directory. Nice intelligence with type, uh, and I want to call the artifact new get on Ash DevOps. Let's see. Yeah, it went away. The seagull. And here. Come on. How many times does it out complete? Oh, now it's happy lambda. So now we have, in this short time, we have done the complete, hopefully, let's run it and see uh, a complete pipeline. Low, but we only execute it locally. So let's try it. Anything else? Because we have a default script and a default task, it will execute this. Uh, and you will see the command to 
uh, the build server. And here we can do things like conditions. So if we don't want to run that locally, we have a call with criteria. And here we can have either a lambda, if there's something that you want to evaluate lazy, uh, at, because things can happen during the build process, or a constant. And then you can have like the TF build rider. That's things like. It's running on Ash Pipelines, hosted in, like, for example. Uh, and you don't need to know those, like this is driven by an environment. You don't need to those environment variables all as rapid nicely. So now if we, if I saved, hopefully, and we run. You see that I skipped that task because I had a criteria that this should only run on the CI. But the entire, like everything is validated and fine. So if we rehash that, I don't want to save the presentation. So, yeah, so. so for the build, .NET Core build, test is the same thing. We had a YAML, very similar. So, I mean, any developer can grok this. The difference is that you have C Sharp, and you saw like the real difference comes when you get the more complicated project. But because sometimes with YAML, there's some inconsistencies. There can be NuGet feeds, can be called field feed, VSDS feed, uh, between because the tasks were done at different times. But here we have a type, so you can reuse variables and things like that. You saw the package. Usually, you can use the data pack or NuGet pack. We also have NuGet support for NuGet XEXE. And it's very like similar, but you have things like, well, we can add a type with the output directory, and we know that that's a file. And same for the publish. You have, can do that both in SAML and YAML, but the difference is that you have something error. And I could execute it locally. It wouldn't work, but like it wouldn't do the actual thing, but I can test that it does the right variable. Because there's so many CI debugging that is, am I in the right folder? I can see so many people that has a like a dir slash ash or ls uh, like dash r just to see what files are on the agent. Here you can do the whole pipeline locally. Well, if you want to do that, there there are some test runners that actually do it automatically if you use XUnit or not. But you can certainly if you do it a different folder. There's actually if we go to the publisher. So commands, and there's a publish, code coverage, publish test result that takes the file you want to publish. Because it could be sometimes you want to merge files, and especially if you do like multi-target projects, you might want to do things with it. Uh, or it can be that you convert because you use something different, like you want to convert to an AJ unit or something like that. So it's, it's just one. Uh, so in that mind, I think that the discoverability is really good. It is well, like it's against the actual code. It's not a schema you're discovering against. It's against what's actually running. So let's try this. I have prepared. I will steal the YAML because I will get that wrong. Let's see. Yeah. All right. type and you can use the excellent UI. So let's just add, oh, one more thing. Uh, we'll fix the git ignore so I don't commit everything. Um, you know, any like tool or things cake installs will ha end up in a tool folder. So that is good to git ignore so we don't commit too much. Yeah, you can use, uh, like either you can, launch it with a dash dash debug, and then you can attach it from like Visual Studio or anything. 
uh, or you can do the same thing this, like, with the add-in that can help you to do it from VS Code. So you can just F5 and do break ones. Uh, let's see. Oh, I already did that. Perfect. So let's try this. Because we have here a pipeline that's never run because this is the first time we wrote it. Um, hopefully. Do that for sure. No. That's yeah, it's helpful. Oh, nice. So like most of the pipeline, we didn't even touch, touch the CI system. So we get everything out. And now we can like grab the coffee or some water. And the difference here is that in this YAML file, if you look in it, it be fun. The only thing I do is the same that I did under a dot .NET tool restore and dot .cake. That's essentially, so what I like, the YAML file just describes the build environment not the pipeline in this slide. So it's very similar to your local environment. Most of the code, only what's specific to this. Let's see how it. So yeah, you can see it restored the tool here. On the paint dry moment. And this is what's kind of nice to run it locally because that took 10 seconds. And it's kind of, kind of, you don't need to do small talk. You can go to the coffee machine and take coffee and it restores. And we don't currently have a parallel runner, but you can do within your task, you get access to anything in .NET. So you can do a parallel for. So that, that's usually what I do if I have like a web deployment, I want to deploy to uh, like five nodes. Then I do a parallel four on something that like a recipe, which means I can do the same code on, because I want like the publish step to be one step. Uh, so that you can do, that, anything. or you can do task by all if you have something async and things like that, and wait that. So, success, the first time. That's never happened in DevOps history. <laughs> and you see here the artifacts it published, and it's called NuGet, which was the artifact name I gave it. And we have the common library and the global tool that was from the sample project. So that was pretty painless. So, This is just it's like a small part of Cake because we can do a lot of things. Cake is very, like from the mindset, extensible has been our goal with it. So we have something called add-ins and there's, I haven't counted them, there's more than 200. There's a lot of add-ins. So if it's, we have several tools baked in, like backers included, this one statement we had. So we have things like MS build is included, new get command line is included, the .NET Core CLI is by default, and N unit and X unit and a lot of things. But if you can't find the thing you want, think like if I want to send a message to Slack or I want to interact with Git, there's an add-in for that. And there's also <coughs> one extension, and you can also any dot, it's just any .NET assembly can be treated as an add-in. So if you want to do something special, it's .NET code. Yeah. We have scripts, so you can load external scripts. So that's a good extension point if you want to reuse something. 
And we have modules, which is a really nice feature, which means you can replace any of the core functionality in Cake. If you want to uh, replace how we do logging or how essentially anything, and because you use uh, in uh, dependency injection internally, you can replace the types that we uh, do. So that's very powerful. And like we have a lot of pre processed directories because this is a script and it's self contained. The most important ones in my mind, you can read on a website by uh, all others, but that is the add in. And that's essentially fetch and assembly from NuGet. You just type the package and the version you don't have to, but I insist because we will tell you a warning. It's important to pin the version because then you have reproducible build. Also, you know which version was used as your script is committed with the code. Uh, we have the scripts and that can be locally in your repository. So you can have like this script is becoming unmaintainable. Well, let's split it up into multiple scripts. So then you can do just a relative path to from the file to load. But a really powerful thing is that you can actually load scripts from NuGet packages. So you can define recipes within your organization with this is how we version our assemblies. This is how we do Y or how we build, or this is the MS build properties we send. You can have ready recipes in a NuGet package. And you can load it from your internal feed or public feed. Uh, most, like, the most elaborate thing is something uh, that we have on our contributor station is cake recipe, which is a convention driven build where you essentially just have one line in your build script and it will very opinionated to build your product for you with just a couple of parameters. So it's really powerful. And module is like this you can essentially just fetch. And we have modules like um, to, if you're on a .NET framework, it, not all versions uh, support long, uh, long file names. There's a long path module. There's also modules that uh, gives the possibility to uh, like load things uh, differently. It can be all from, I want the build system to, if you run on Travis, to have the folding items. So you get a cake task just that, like tasks in Travis and things like that. There are a lot of modules that can do really cool stuff. There's something to dig into. Um, and so that's why this is, we're going to like a tight rope because it's, build server agnostic. So let's see if we can build it on another CI. That's this. And uh, the hottest thing now is probably GitHub Actions. So let's see if we can, uh, with very little changes, uh, and the chef has prepared, hopefully, to just. So GitHub Actions is essentially also YAML. So let's see. See it in this code. So you define uh, workflows with YAML. So this is just, uh, I'm gonna I'll just describe what's specific for this <laughs> workflow. And uh, of course, it's even if it's made by the same people, it's not the same YAML. Uh, but it's an, in my opinion, I think it's a better YAML than uh, because it's almost like V2 of pipelines. Uh, so you can do things like matrixes, which is really nice. So I will build this, hopefully, on Windows, Ubuntu and macOS. I will install the right version of the .NET Core, and then we have a community contribution that has a task that will do all the cake things for you. So we'll just, you just reference that task, and it will hopefully execute. I haven't tried it yet, so let's, uh, let's see. So. Uh, we'll debug together if it fails. I will need to create a repository for this. I will need to put it somewhere. So let's go to GitHub. I heard that's a cool place to be. Doing a new repository. It's important. We can just do it blank, public, go nuts. Oh, I'm going to call it something else. I can rename it. I think I had a remote prepared. Because this is Svetog. Yes. Oh, that's right. So let's push it. Oh, 
GIF is not uh, ready. And we take the URI. It's always nice to do the last minute thing. So it pushed. No code. Here we have an art build it's running on three operating systems. Exciting. Will this work? Five minutes left. And we will have the same script on three different operating systems. It's installing .NET Core. So we have the tree one. And that's like really important in all CI, pin your versions so you know which versions. Because that's one thing that burned me. Like this weekend, we had to do a fix because they released a new version of Mono on the bill agents, and it was different versions on different operating systems. So pin, pin live versions. Um, so now, .NET, now it runs the cake script. And essentially, it does the thing for you, .dot .dot tool install. And it does execute the build cake. Exciting. The cool thing is that Ubuntu is already done. So we can we can check the Linux build. And it's done. So I mean that's a big advantage because if some company would buy this that did the oh well they did it. So if you want to switch to a different CI, it's totally possible. And it skipped the published build because it wasn't running on Azure DevOps. But you have to, that's the kind of thing that you need to switch to support each CI. But you can also do that switch statement within the published task. I just do, if running on Azure DevOps, do this kind of publish. If running on something else, do this. So thanks. I will need to rename the repo to correct, but I will do that right away. The, the presentation is also online, and you find me at devlead almost everywhere.